What's going on, guys? It's John. Your host for the Southern Constitutionalist. So... I don't know, I've been kind of tossing around a couple things that I thought would be good to talk about. I don't know. Kind of not really in the mood for it, though, but at the same time... I'm waiting for my laptop to update <clears throat> while I'm in the middle of working on some stuff. And uh, it's got to update and then it's got to reboot, finish updating and reboot again. That's the pattern that it follows. Although I got to say, I find it really, really unusual that I have right after the administration's push for monitoring and censoring of the American people that I have to update my laptop, my desktop, and my phone. All of them completely different operating systems. Pretty much at the same time. Coincidence? I guess it could be, but I have my doubts. I'm pretty irritated about it because of course I can't figure out why my laptop's not doing what I'm telling it to do over the internet until I notice a little orange dot at the power because I was getting ready to reboot the damn thing and it turns out it needed to be updated didn't tell me didn't let me know I had to go digging through while I'm trying to troubleshoot and figure it out on my own right after I updated my phone last night because it wasn't working right. And then my desktop. I, that's, I don't know, three different operating systems and they all needed updates at the same time or approximately the same time. That just seems a little fishy to me. Call me a conspiracy theorist if you want to, but I learned a while ago not to trust the government. This administration in particular. I mean, they're not even hiding what they want anymore. They're telling you straight up in the news, we want to monitor the civilian population. We want to control what they see. We want to control what they read. We want to control what's in the classroom. <clears throat> we want to control it all. But what happened to freedom of choice? God gave us free will. Some think that was a mistake. Some think that was a blessing. But God gave us free will. Making decisions for yourself is part of growing up. It's part of being an adult. Taking the responsibility for those actions and those decisions is also part of being an adult. Not letting others decide for you and they take the benefits away from you and leave you with the consequences when the decision's bad. It's not what it's about. That's not freedom. That's not liberty. Hell, that's not even free choice. It's a version, it's a, it's a type of slavery. So apparently uh, Turning Point was having some kind of a thing over the weekend. I don't know, rally, symposium, bunch of talkers, whatever. And uh, it's caused some division within, I guess, the Republican or conservative or whatever. Definitely on the conservative side. So, there's this girl who's a cam girl. She does porn. But she's a staunch conservative on most things. Politically, she leans conservative. She's an activist. She purchased a VIP pass 
to the Turning Point event. Some people are saying that she was given one by Turning Point and they invited her. No, according to her interview, she went and she bought it. A few hundred bucks, whatever. She was supposed to be there for all three days. Well, she used her porn name. Trying to protect her real identity, as some people refer to it as. So she used her stage name. Cotter Lanyard was there for about three hours the first day. And when she went back to the hotel, I don't know if it was at the end of the day or if it was during a break, she checks the emails on her phone, and one of the emails is somebody from Turning Point telling her, please don't come back. We're deactivating your VIP pass. Now, there are some people on the conservative side, Laura Chen's one of them, and I totally disagree with her on this, but Laura Chen seems to think that it was the right thing to do. I don't. A lot of people are trying to spin it that she was there trying to drum up business. That's not what she was there for, according to her own words. Now, this is one of those she said, she said debates, but take it for what you want. <clears throat> I mean, she's been a conservative activist for however long, regardless of what she does for work. She's not there to talk. She's not handing out business cards or anything. Why not let her be there? She's just there to listen to the speakers. I don't know. That's just my opinion. I don't agree with it. I think they should have left her be there. My other question is, did they refund her the money? Since they went ahead and deactivated her pass. <sighs> Lori Chen also talks about, in her latest video, Black Rifle Coffee Company, and apparently there's to do with Black Rifle. Um... I don't know. I, I used to follow Black Rifle on a couple of social media sites because I thought their patriotic videos were fun and entertaining. But, um, that was it. I mean, they got good coffee, don't get me wrong. I have had it and tried it. Ordered a box, K-Cups. <clears throat> it's good stuff. You know, it's good quality coffee. I won't call it high quality. Don't think I've really had high quality with about a hundred dollars a pound or whatnot. As far as I know, I've never had it. But it's definitely a better quality coffee. I like it. But there's a big to-do with Black Rifle Coffee Company and Kyle Rittenhouse. You know, and I'm like, well, okay, if you don't want to support Kyle, that's fine. But at the same time, the videos that I've seen for what happened that night, Kyle was in the right. It's whatever. <clears throat> so, you know, I kind of stayed out of it. I was like, yeah, whatever. They're entitled to their opinions. They don't agree with it. That's their prerogative. Well, then it comes out that apparently one of the founders did an interview with, I don't know, some news agency. I guess it was a phone interview because it was like a journal article or a news magazine article or something and the guy's cussing up a storm which isn't really surprising for military veterans but at the same time that's not really how you want to present your company you know it's not really professional looking but okay whatever but he's cussing up a storm about the Kyle Rittenhouse situation and the flack that they're taking on social media, which I don't know, I hadn't seen. This is what the magazine article reports. And uh, he goes on about Proud Boys. How you go from Kyle Rittenhouse to Proud Boys, I'm not really sure. They're not affiliated with each other that I know of. But he goes on and talks about dislike for the Proud Boys 
and calls him a white supremacist group, which kind of makes me sound like he's drinking the Kool-Aid because once again, the two major founders of Proud Boys, one's black and one's a Hispanic, I don't really think they're going to create a racist group of white supremacists. But hey, I guess anything's possible nowadays. It's whatever. But he's going off on them, and he's talking about Kyle Rittenhouse, and he's going off, and he's using all these F-bombs and all this other stuff. Okay, fine, that's your prerogative, but I don't really see why you're getting so angry about it. Well, the guy's like, anybody who supports them, I will pay them to not <clears throat> patronize my company. Hmm, that's a double loss. Because you're not getting their income, but you're also paying them, so... It's a double loss. What kind of marketing strategy is that? I mean, I know some people say... Bad news is... In any publicity, including bad publicity, is, is technically good publicity. <sighs> when you're selling something. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I just think it's kind of weird. Uh, I don't know. I'll still get their coffee from time to time when I can afford it. But I quit following them because they didn't have their funny little anecdotal patriotic videos anymore. I was like, well, there's no point in whatever. They don't really have a lot to say, and when they do post something, it's usually advertising for coffee, and I don't really need to see their advertising. But that's just me. But yeah, this is showing a rift and a divide within... I guess you could say patriots and conservatives and Republicans and whatever else might be on that side of the fence. <coughs> Which honestly is fine, if that's what you guys want. It's your prerogative. But the truth of the matter is, that's not going to bring the country back together. and It's really not going to help anybody. Whether any of the smaller factions or the large faction as a whole, it's not going to help. It's not going to help anyone. By furthering the divide, whether you're increasing the distance between two major players and a disagreement, or you're taking those players and you're breaking them down into smaller groups, isn't going to help anybody except for whatever it is you're trying to fight against. So if you don't want critical theory in schools, and you don't want socialism... and you want a growing, stronger economy, then you need to stand with all those people who are supporting the same thing, regardless of their other points of view on different stuff. It's called civil discourse. It's called having a discussion, not seeing eye to eye, and agreeing to disagree, but not getting angry and overreacting and just for lack of a better term, canceling that person completely because of one thing that you might not agree with. One or two things you might not agree with. Going back to the girl at Turning Point. <clears throat> She's active in porn. Okay, that's her chosen career. That's her choice. You know, I don't know what she does. I don't really even know her, didn't know of her until this started showing up in news and social media. But honestly, I think that's one of those things that should be legalized. I kind of feel like prostitution should be legalized. It's safer for those who choose to work in it. It actually takes away a market for those that are trying to force others into it. And um, there's less need for security 
there's also, it, you know, it opens them up and allows them that if they do have problems, they can go and speak to law enforcement for those areas who still have good law enforcement. The benefits honestly outweigh the supposed costs is the way that I look at it. Not to mention the fact that that's been around since basically the dawn of man. And it doesn't matter what you do, it's going to be there and continue. Whether it's legalized and possibly placed with certifications and medical screenings and whatever else or it's criminalized, heavily criminalized you can go so far as to issue the death penalty to them as soon as you find out that somebody's guilty of it <clears throat> there are still going to be those out there doing it some of them forced, some of them choosing to but now they're going to be doing it in secret and in hiding and they're going to refuse medical treatment. They have no repercussions for going to get assistance from law enforcement or lawyers or anything with the legal system. And whatever. That's just my opinion. Take it or leave it. But the point is that this, <clears throat> this division has been caused and been steadily growing over the last several decades isn't benefiting anybody, let alone the division of the two major political groups, which is just crap to begin with, because all of the politicians, I don't care what side of the fence they're on, they're all playing some kind of a game. And you, the taxpayer, you, the constituent, are stuck in the middle being played. Strength comes from... Our strength comes from our local politics and our community. Those are the ones that have a direct impact on us, usually like within the next few months to possibly even the next day when something's passed. I've said it before. It flows from your local community, your municipality. It goes from there to your county, to your voting district, to your state assembly and governor, and then from the state to the fed. You want to change things at the top, change them at the bottom. If the top is rotten, more than likely your roots are rotten too. Do something about it. That's where you start. <clears throat> I don't know. It's whatever, I guess. So, to me, going through the news, going through social media, we're headed for a war. Actually, we're headed for several wars. Question is, are we going to have a civil war in the country first and outside agencies take advantage of it? Or are we going to have something along the lines of the beginnings and buildup of a civil, or of a world war that ends up fracturing us on the inside as well, which is gonna happen first. I mean, China's already told the world that they're gonna nuke Japan if Japan interferes with Taiwan. A lot of your mainstream news isn't talking about it, but it's there. It's in videos on Rumble and YouTube. Um, whether you guys remember or even realize it, China's also said that they were going to nuke us, the United States. When the United States first probing into the lab leak theory, China turned around and said that they were going to launch nukes and get, prepare for nuclear war. And honestly, they have been preparing for it. 
out in one of the deserts, they've been building 120 plus missile silos. Does that mean that there's missiles there? No, could be a shell game. You could put 120 missile silos with 10 missiles there. And then it's up to your opponent to try and figure out which ones actually have missiles to be knocked out versus which ones don't. But they said they were going to launch nuclear weapons at us if we continued the probe. Well, obviously we continued the probe and it hasn't happened. But now supposedly we have documentation released claiming that China has been hacking us. Civilian, government, and business computers for a while. At the same time, Russia's been doing it. We do know that Russia and China have partnered together and have said that they will stand against America together. You tell me, guys, what's going on? A lot of people aren't aware of it, but the Pentagon started shifting. There were some news articles about it. The Pentagon, when they were pulling out of the Middle East, they actually started purchasing armaments and munitions for the Pacific, gearing up to defend the, specific, the Pacific Ocean, excuse me, against China with a possible war. And you know, desert warfare is completely different from that of island hopping and being in the tropics and the equator over in the Pacific and Asia. Think about that, guys. Will it happen? I don't know. China seems pretty determined to rule the world. They're making threats to all kinds of people and countries and places. And both civilian and military, military organizations. So take that as you see fit. That's about all I have in that regard. I don't know anything more currently. I know that they're still flying and invading Taiwan's airspace and they keep saying that they're going to reunite Taiwan whether they want to be or not. And I don't think it's saber rattling anymore. North Korea's on their side, which means there's the possibility of them coming across the DMZ to take over South Korea. You know? There's definitely implications and possibilities and moves being made that could definitely lead to a world war to include nuclear weapons. Or if the other side is pacifistic enough to just roll over and accept it, you're going to find a one world government slash extremely harsh dictatorship. I don't know guys, but the near future is not exactly looking bright these days. I'm a staunch supporter of the Second Amendment, as I've said many times. My best advice to you guys would be become preppers. Start planting gardens for food. Purchase guns for those of you who can. Purchase ammo for those who can't have guns and firearms. Get bows, arrows other sharp objects that and projectiles stock up on stock up on non-perishable food items canned goods MREs and things like that we've got problems getting gas in certain areas we've got food shortages in other areas they're trying to force vaccinate I'm don't even want to touch that one right now. I'm just so sick of hearing about it. And then they're also monitoring and censoring our information over the internet. A lot of propaganda coming out of the news. Both sides of, regardless where the news agencies sit, 
conservative as well as democratic, as well as progressive and socialistic. The lines have been drawn, and the militaries are starting to step on that line. And it's the civilian populace who's caught in the middle. Honestly, if you guys don't see that these are the times that the Second Amendment was written and made for, there really is something wrong with you. The Second Amendment wasn't just referring to the militia or the military. <clears throat> the Second Amendment was referring to individuals, their right to have the ability to defend themselves. That's all it is. And it doesn't specify against militaristic takeover. It doesn't specify tyrannical governments, even though that is referenced, that's not specified. It doesn't specify outside governments and agencies. It's for you to defend your life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Period. It's that simple. So I'm over 20 minutes. I'm getting close to 30. I'm going to go ahead and get off of here. Just kind of rambling and wasting time, I guess, while I'm waiting for these updates. Till next time. You guys watch your six.